Hello everybody, my name is Harris Moidere. Um, I met John, the late John, in 1986. We were 19, 20 years old, as most of the people here, especially those who were in co group, were, were 19, 20 years old. And uh, co group was a group that after high school, you sort of go for a fellowship every Sunday afternoon. And it was um, a, a program which was run by the navigators. And we would go there every Sunday afternoon. And that's how I met John. But one of the things that struck me is that you can imagine 19, 20 year olds who have just left high school, carefree and what have you. John was just this one guy who was very mature, very focused, very, very smart, very clean, very, he, he seemed just mature. And I, I looked at him and I wondered, well, this guy seems to just be different from the rest of us. And um, our friendship started then. And it was a friendship which grew as years went by until the Lord called him to be with him 22 years later. And one of the things about John, as um, Tosh had earlier spoken about and Anthony just in a few minutes ago, this gentleman was a solid guy. I remember those days when Core Group, he was working at Kemri. And what struck me every time that he would be going to work, he would always be smart, he would be on time. And many of us probably don't even know that he actually worked in Kemri just before he joined um, uh, university. And he was so faithful. And I remember when he finished, he told me that the, 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 the person who was in charge in Kenya of the department was working, really was keen on him going back. Because he had really shown that he was able to work in a research environment. He was working in one of the labs in Kemri. And so therefore, uh, we went on being friends and he went to university and he went to medical school. And one of the things is that uh, a few of my friends knew then, uh, my mom was actually in hospital and John actually became a friend of my mom. And my mom had been in hospital for very many years and John would go and visit her and because he was a medical student, he had access. And I remember one of the things John would do he would actually give me messages from my mother. And he was a gentleman who was my age. He was a few months younger than me. But the way we, our relationship was, he was like an older brother. Because he was so focused in whatever he did. He was self-motivated. He was committed. He was, he was just a gentleman that whatever he did, he did it with excellence. And one of the passions that if you knew Joe, that he was very passionate about is discipleship. And I remember a, a couple of us guys were in the Bible study. And of course, as young men, we were a Bible study that was led by a gentleman called Jack Warren. Many times we would not finish our homework, but John would always finish his homework. He was always ready. He was always, I mean, he was a guy who you would not fault him on anything. And as the time went on, I got to know him. And what I found very interesting is that his friendship with Harriet, because their friendship started when they were in core group. And I can remember John, you know, writing letters, he would write a letter to, to Harriet and he had his Bible next to him. 
and he would share words of encouragement. Of course, he never allowed me to read the letters. But I remember I would tease him and tell him, how can you be using a Bible and you're writing a letter to a girl? But John always, for him to leave was Christ. And anybody he came across, he encouraged them to live for Christ, to grow for Christ, and things like that. And one of the things is just a verse which I felt I could share, which would give a description of John, is Psalms 37 verses 25 and 26. And I shared this verse during his funeral. I was encouraging his children and Harriet. And is that, and now I think when I shared it, I don't think I qualified to say that I, I, I have been young. But now I can say, I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. Now one of the attributes of, jo of, of John, he was always merciful and he was always lending. Lending his time, lending his money, lending his resources. John, whoever he met, whether they were a dentist, whether they were a watchman, whatever station you were in life, John was, treated you as a human being. I remember once there was a watchman who he was actually discipling. And he was teaching him to, you know, he was teaching him about things for Christ. So John did not choose who he shared Christ with. And why this verse I say it is very appropriate is because I have seen his descendants, even despite him leaving them 12 years ago, they have not begged. The Lord has provided. And indeed, they are blessed. And therefore, I, as far as I'm concerned, and I'm sure a lot of people share this, is that John was a righteous man. And he lived right, he did right. He was just a man who left a lot of impact. And especially for me personally, even when I was getting married, and I, 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 I told Frida that my best man was going to be John Mamra Wakiaga. She accepted and said, yes, that's the right guy. And I, and I can tell you is that Indeed, he was a best man. Because even during the service in my wedding, John took notes for me. Of course, me, I was very excited about getting married. John took the notes and shared those notes with me. And so therefore, as we remember John, who left us 12 years ago, I would say that they lived a man who walked with Christ, followed Christ, and he was a great example. And I see a lot of impact that he, he left. And I just want to thank everybody who was involved in, you know, to arranging this. Thank you. No, th th thank, thank you so much, Harris. And I know you are very close and that you had so many things to say, but may I ask everybody else to pace themselves and limit themselves to about three minutes because we wanted to give as much time to Harriet and uh, the family as possible. Thank you so much. Okay, I guess I'm um, the next. Uh, my name is Johnson Mwangi, and I love the Lord Jesus Christ. That's my personal savior. Uh, we were classmates with Wakiaga. Uh, personally, I got saved at the end of our second year, uh, but Dr. Wakiaga came into dental school when he was already a believer. And therefore, he, plus a few of us who are already believers, like Dr. Mwiti, uh, uh, Drokas Busela, uh, Adeline Vilemboa, and those, they mentored me uh, in the faith in my early years. And therefore, we got to work together for the remaining part of dental school together. The, the world says that time heals, but we know that this is not always true. Some people 
life comes to a halt with the departure of a loved one. However, in a recent Everyday with Jesus devotion by Selwyn Hughes, he argues that it is actually God who heals through time. And indeed, God has continued to do this to Harriet, to Kijala, and even to Abraham, who were left uh, much as young children by, by Wakiaga. Uh, thank you very much, Harriet, for uh, the privilege and the honor just to speak on behalf of uh, my classmates in dental school and also as uh, my housemate, uh, Wakiaga. I had actually written the same words Halis have written from Psalms 37, 25. Therefore, I will not repeat them. But I had gone further to see that in verse 28, it says that the Lord will not forsake the faithful one. The, however, the offspring of the wicked will perish. And for me, uh, for me, this was a lesson for us parents, especially to my colleagues, um, the, the dentists who, who we were with. Let us walk with God, and whether we are there or not, God will honor his word, and our children will actually be mighty in the land. So on behalf of the BDS class of 1991, we graduated in 1991, let me just share a few memories of Wakiaga, uh, especially for the sake of Kijala and Abraham, who may not know a few, th a few of the things that, about their dad. Uh, Wakiaga was a very sharp student, actually an A student. While most of us struggled, in dental school, everybody knows how dental school tough it was. We struggled with C's and, and many people had to do supplementaries and actually repeat their years. Wakaga went through the whole four years um, with basically A's and where he probably failed, he, he, he got a B. Uh, and, 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 and even when he had... Uh, okay, sorry. Wakiaga was also very strong-willed, even with, uh, with his heart health situation. Uh, like somewhere around third year, the second year, third year, he had to go through a second heart surgery to replace the first pacemaker which had been placed. And even after going through that, he still scored his grades and finished very strong. The third thing is that he was, a very, he was very deep in his faith, especially the word of God the study of the word of God. And his testimony and life were consistent. What he said, what he did was consistent with that. Wakiaga okay, was a devoted Anglican <laughs> to the core. When many of us tried to hop, hip hop from one church to the other, I'm not sure Wakiaga okay, stepped into any other church. And of course he was very devoted to the navigators. I, I didn't get to know much about the navigators until later, but all I knew through the years that we went together that he was very devoted to us. The other thing is that Wakega did not hesitate to rebuke those who mocked God and also his faith. He was very categorical about that. And uh, just to give an example, uh, we were in, a, in an exam in second year, doing a medicine exam. And one of uh, our colleagues, our uh, fellow student, who was very sharp young man in the class, uh, in the class, he kind of mockingly asked John, uh, John, see you play for us so that we, we pass this exam. <laughs> I remember Akega telling him, my friend, if you have not prayed for yourself before this exam, you are in big trouble. <laughs> and surely, I always remember what happened. Though this year, gentleman may never have known he actually never passed that exam and he actually had to repeat the year. So, um, I think Kijala and whatever, probably they got, they probably never know. Uh, their father carried a lax sack on his back for all the time that I knew him. And, and, and that lax sack had, at least I knew it had a Bible and a notebook, because he had to go for a Bible study from one meeting to the other in church. In fact, let alone that uh, lax sack became a, a bit of a joke. Uh, from the words uh, of his uh, uh, Harriet's mom when I think he went to visit them and one day he didn't have his laxa. And I think Harriet's mom asked Harriet later on, uh, uh, Harriet, what happens to John's uh, eternal burden? <laughs> uh, so that is one thing that uh, really 
characterized John. He had this laxac on his back, which he carried permanently on his laxac. And I was just thinking whether he's still carrying it in heaven. Uh, we will get to know that. Okay, later on after I finished dental school, we, the Lord somehow miraculously and graciously gave us a house uh, with John, a lady who was going to stand in China, came to Kenyatta and looked for people, somebody who could stay in their house. And me and John took that house. It was not flat as, uh, as somebody said. It was actually a fully self, uh, fully furnished three bedroomed house somewhere near Lace Coast. And that's where we lived for the year we were doing our internship. Uh, some of the things that uh, Lokiaga taught me about that is on budgeting. He was very meticulous with budgeting. Every cent counted. And uh, I remember every Saturday at 6.30 a.m., we had to go to a Kurima market to buy vegetables uh, to eat for the week. Uh, let me finish. I'm just there. Uh, Wakega taught me how to cook ugali uh, in, in five minutes. Uh, not that I didn't know how to cook ugali, but at least he, he showed me that uh, ugali cooks quickly. And how you know it has, uh, it's, it's, it's evad, is you take a piece, throw it to the wall. If it sticks, it's not cooked. If it drops, then it's ready. And there we are ready to go. Uh, I think uh, I thank God for his life and all that he meant to me. And later on, after even he passed on, my wife Florence and Harriet have kept the family friendship alive. And uh, we have raised our children together. I want to thank specifically Harriet for being a woman of prayer. He has prayed for his friends' children, especially my children, our children, uh, to the extent that um, when our children are in trouble, Harriet, I think, through the Spirit, would actually be praying for them even before we get to know it. And, and I want to bless the Lord for Harriet, for Kijala, and for Abraham, for the Father the Lord has brought them. A Merry Christmas to you all, and may the Lord bless you. Amen. Um, hi, everybody. I, my name is Stephen Gishohi. I'm an ophthalmologist. And uh, I speak on uh, behalf of, when I said, uh, when I was told to speak on behalf of professional colleagues, uh, I'll speak from the perspective of one who taught with John at the university. Um, when Robert asked me to share about John, my first question was, how much time do I have? because John is not one of those people you struggle to find something to say about. Um, some of you may have been in situations where somebody has passed on and you're asked to say something about them and you're struggling what to say uh, because if there's anything to say, it's probably not good. So for John, that can be the case as you have seen from what everybody has shared here. And uh, we taught together at the university and um, I just wanted to share a little story of how, of how that came to be. Um, I actually heard about John before I met him, and uh, I used to be at Nairobi school while he was at Lenana. And at around the time he was sick, there was a fundraising film we had in our school uh, to, to raise money to, towards that initiative to send him abroad. I never knew I would get to meet this person. I just knew there was somebody in Lenana who needed something. And later on, we met at co group in the Navigators. And then later on, went to the medical school together while he was in the dental class, I was in the medicine class. And uh, we used to have a group with uh, other people. We used to see, we would, we would pray together. And that was John Wakiaga. There was Ken Salamba, who's also a dentist. And uh, some of you might know Mark Gashier. Uh, he's now an anesthetist. Uh, Mark was also in Lenana with John. So we used to pray together. And because of the experiences we had at the medical school, Mwangi has just said how things used to be tough there. I remember we actually one day prayed and said, you guys, maybe we should come back and teach in this place. And God in his own wisdom, somehow led us all to come back to, to teach at the medical school. So while we were teaching there for a short time, for the for a short time that we overlapped together, what I remember of John is, if you are ever talking to John on the corridors and any of his students was passing by, He's one of those people whose students wants to come to, not one of those lecturers whose students want to run away from. And that's because it's John, John embodied excellence. 
um, Colossians 3.23 really was John. Uh, he did his work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. And uh, some of the academic achievements he was able to gain in those early years. Um, John actually published, was a lead author uh, in a Cochrane Systematic Review uh, with the Cochrane Oral Health Group in Manchester. Um, that's a big word I've just said, but I'm just saying that's equivalent to writing an article in Time magazine. Um, so John was an accomplished person, a very serious professional, and uh, he reflected what an academician should be. Smart at his work, taught by example, was able to research and publish, and most of all, he was a role model. He was a kind of person who could, who could say, do as I do. Uh, there are people who can only tell you to do as they say, but not as they do, but not John. And I see some people here who would probably be even more qualified to speak about him than I do. Uh, Doris Musera, for, for one, I know was a, they, they had a, a clinical practice together. And I think she would attest to the fact that what I've said is just but a small reflection of the great giant that John was. Thank you very much. This is Mr. Mwaniki speaking. As I lay down here, after coming from a prolonged admission at the, at the Nairobi Hospital, I feel greatly elated to be selected amongst young people to talk about a young person. I first met Akiaga when he came to visit us in, our, my, in my house with Anthony and they have dinner. That was the first time. Then we met many times. I, I got to know even him better when I, when I, I got an appointment to attend his clinics. He was, he was, he was a good dentist. But good does not mean careless. Good means strict. He was strict. He didn't allow me to do the things I want, but he allowed me to do the things that he saw were better for me and for my teeth. As I got to know, to know John, one of the things that struck me about him is his humility. But you know, sometimes we, we think about humility as weakness. And one of the things that I, I see is in the Bible. The Bible says, Moses was the humblest man in all the earth. The humblest in all the earth. But remember, he led two million people from captivity to freedom. So, the, the, so this evening, as I speak about Wakara, remind about Moses, his humility, his courage, and his strength. John was not anything different. It is difficult for me to finish this without remembering Mrs. Wakera. And Mrs. Wakera will remember you with just one fast of in a year of far away stood alone a great cross the emblem of suffering and shame and i love that old crest where the dearest at best 
For the world of sinners will sing. So cherish the old dagged cross. Where my troubles are trust I lay down. I walk in to the old dragged cross and exchange some for a crown. Please bear with me. There are days I could not be able to utter words. I would open my mouth, no words come. So I'm so grateful to the Lord to give me a mouth to speak. Amen. <laughs>